Hi there, and welcome to the show. You're listening to another episode. Every other Tuesday, I release a short bit about whatever's going on in the Parks household or whatever's in my head at the time. It's a way for you to get to know me a little better in between my rare disease interviews. So I think any intelligent human being loves Matthew McConaughey, right? I mean, sure, he's handsome and he has this voice and this accent and a tan, and he has made some of the best rom-coms of our time. By the way, can we just please start making classic rom-coms again? Thank you. So Matthew published his journals last year into a book that is titled Green Light. It's uh, his journal that he had been keeping since he was 15 years old, and it is one of a kind. It's magnificent. I love his theory, and it's so much more thought-provoking than finding the silver linings and practicing gratitude and all of those things. His theory of green lights. It almost makes me think of uh, the other kinds of mainstream schools of thought about vulnerability and emotions, you know, both of them being essential, noticing them, dealing with them, seeing them as signals. But Matthew's green light mantra kind of encompasses all of it without having to commit yourself to one focus, if that makes sense. His idea is finding the green lights to achieve more happiness, less stress, more understanding. He says, if you know how and when to deal with life's challenges, how to get relative with the inevitable, you can enjoy a state of success that I call catching green lights. And he says it like Matthew every time. So you have to get the audio book because every time he's done with a story, he's like, green light. Like, Matthew, it's so good. This episode's starting to sound like a book review, I know. Okay, so I'm planning my new year, which starts every day. And I'm going to be looking for those green lights. Know when to proceed with caution on the yellows and stop and face those reds with courage. I think uh, one of the biggest things I've learned since rare disease is how important living is. Some of it starts to happen without any of your attention. You know, the people who don't need to be in your orbit eventually float to the top and spill out and spin out into the universe somewhere into a rare disease black hole. (laughs) It can be painful, but ultimately it can be okay. The universe is full of stars that will start to burn bright. Go that way. More space. Green light. You begin to comprehend the extraordinary things that you can carry, that you can do in a day, every single day. This abundance of resilience and courage. Green light. The clock starts ticking and you hear that second hand. You're aware of it. And you can slow it by paying attention. Green light. There's a lot to find in just those three examples. Hundreds, maybe thousands of stories in there. So I'm going to be getting in Matthew McConaughey's Lincoln Navigator and discovering more of those green lights. Seriously, buy this audiobook. There's so much wisdom to noodle around about green lights in our rare disease life. And I'm just going to leave you with one more thing that he said that really uh, resonated with me. Because once upon a gene came from paying attention to a green light. A green light that I thought was a burning ball of fire. (laughs) Red light. And also, happy three years to once upon a gene. So one last thought from Matthew. He says, hopefully it's medicine that tastes good. A couple of aspirin instead of the infirmary. A spaceship to Mars without needing your pilot's license. Going to church without having to be born again. And laughing through the tears. It's a love letter to life. It's a guide to catching more green lights and realizing that the yellows and the reds eventually turn green too. (laughs) 